This is chapter 12 of the ATI Maternal Newborn, Pain Management. Pain is a subjective and individual experience, and each client's response to the pain of labor is unique. Safety for the mother and fetus must be the first consideration of the nurse when planning pain management measures. Sources of pain during labor. First stage, internal visceral pain that can be felt as back and leg pain. Pain causes dilation, effacement, and stretching of the cervix, distension of the lower segment of the uterus, contractions of the uterus with resultant uterine ischemia. Second stage, pain that is somatic and occurs with fetal descent and expulsion. Pain causes pressure and distension of the vagina and the perineum described by the client as burning, splitting, and tearing. Oh my God. Pressure and pulling on the pelvic structures, ligaments, fallopian tubes, ovaries, bladder, and peritoneum. Laceration of soft tissues, cervix, vagina, and perineum. Third stage, pain with the expulsion of the placenta is similar to pain experienced during the first stage. Pain causes uterine contractions, pressure, and pulling of pelvic structures. Fourth stage, Pain is caused by distension and stretching of the vagina and the perineum incurred during the second stage with a splitting, burning, and tearing sensation. (laughs) Pain assessment. Pain level cannot always be assessed by monitoring the outward expressions of a client. Client pain assessment can require persistent questioning and astute observation by the nurse. Cultural beliefs and behaviors of clients during labor and birth can affect the client's pain management. Anxiety and fear are associated with pain as fear and anxiety increases, muscle tension increases, and thus the experience and pain increases, becoming a cycle of pain. Fear, tension, and pain slow the progression of labor. Assess beliefs and expectations related to discomfort, pain relief, and birth plans regarding pain relief methods for clients and labor. Assess level, quality, frequency, duration, intensity, and location of pain through verbal and nonverbal cues. Use an appropriate pain scale, allowing the client to indicate the severity of their pain on a scale of 0 to 10, with 10 representing the most severe pain. Help the client maintain the proper position during administration of pharmacological interventions. Assist the client with positioning for comfort during labor and birth and following pharmacological interventions. Provide client safety after pharmacological interventions by putting the bed in a low position, maintaining side rails in the up position. Evaluate the client's response to pain relief methods used. Indications of pain. Behavioral manifestations like crying, moaning, screaming, gesturing, writhing, avoidance, withdrawal, inability to follow instructions, increasing blood pressure, tachycardia, and hyperventilation. Nausea and vomiting with an increase in gastric acidity. Non-pharmacological pain management. Non-pharmacological pain management measures reduce anxiety, fear, and tension, which are major contributing factors to pain and labor. Gate control theory of pain. Based on the concept that the sensory nerve pathways that the pain sensations use to travel to the brain will allow only a limited number of sensations to travel at any given time. By sending alternate signals through these pathways, the pain signals can be blocked from ascending the neurologic pathway and inhibit the brain's perception and sensation of pain. It assists in the understanding of how non-pharmacological pain techniques can work to relieve pain. Interventions, cognitive strategies, childbirth education, childbirth preparation methods such as Lamaze, patterned breathing exercises, promotes relaxation and pain management. Doulas can assist clients using methods for non-pharmacological pain management, (coughs) hypnosis, and biofeedback. Sensory stimulation strategies. Based on the gate control theory to promote relaxation and pain relief, aromatherapy, breathing techniques, imagery, music, use of focal points, and subdue lighting. (coughs) Cutaneous stimulation strategies based on the gate control theory to promote relaxation and pain relief, therapeutic touch and massage, back rubs and massage, walking, rocking, effleurage, which is light, gentle, circular stroking of the client's abdomen with the fingertips, tips and rhythm with breathing during contractions, sacral counter pressure, 
This is consistent pressure is applied by the support person using the heel of the hand or fist against the client's sacral area to counteract pain in the lower back. Application of hot or cold transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation or TENS, hydrotherapy, whirlpool or shower increases maternal endorphin levels, acupressure, kneeling, squatting, semi-sitting, supine position only when placement of a wedge. Okay, pharmacological pain management includes analgesia and local regional analgesics to avoid slowing the progress of labor. Prior to administering analgesic medication, the nurse should verify that the labor is well established by performing a vaginal exam and evaluating uterine contraction patterns, alleviates pain sensations, or raises the threshold for pain perception. Also, the nurse should conduct a fall safety risk assessment for clients who request pain management interventions during labor and birth, which increases the risk for falls. Analgesia, which is sedatives or barbiturates. Sedatives are sequobarbitual, phenobarbitual, or phenobarbit- pentobarbitual, or phenobarbitual, are not typically used during birth, but they can be used during the early or latent phase of labor to relieve anxiety and induce sleep. Adverse effects. Neonate respiratory depression secondary to the medication crossing the placenta and affecting the fetus. These medications should not be administered if birth is anticipated within 12 to 24 hours. Unsteady ambulation of the client, inhibition of the mother's ability to cope with the pain of labor. Sedatives should not be given if the, parent, if the client is experiencing pain because of apprehension, can inc- increase the cause the client to become hyperactive and disoriented. <clears throat> Dim the lights and provide a quiet atmosphere. Provide safety for the client by lowering the position of the bed. Assist the mother to cope with flavor. Assess the neonate for respiratory depression. Opioid analgesics. Opioid analgesics or meperdine, hydrochloride, fentanyl, butorphanol, and now bufine act in the CNS to decrease the perception of pain without the loss of consciousness. The client can receive opioid analgesics IM or IV, but the IV route is recommended during labor because the action is quicker. These are usually given during the early part of the active labor. Butorphanol and now bufine provide pain relief without causing significant respiratory depression in the mother or fetus. Both IM and IV routes are used. Adverse effects are respiratory depression in the neonate at the mother medicated too close to the time of birth, reduction of gastric emptying, increased risk for nausea and emesis, increased risk for aspiration of food or fluids in the stomach, bladder and bowel elimination can be inhibited, sedation, tachycardia, hypotension, allergic reaction. Prior to administering analgesic medication, verify that labor is well established by performing a vaginal exam. Administer antiemetics as prescribed. Monitor maternal vital signs, uterine contraction pattern, and continuous FHR monitoring. Assess maternal vital signs and fetal heart rate and pattern and document before and after administration of opioids for pain relief. Naloxone and opioid antagonists should be readily available for reversal of opioid-induced respiratory depression. <clears throat> Metoclopramide can control nausea and anxiety does not relieve pain and is used as an adjunct with opioids. Dry mouth and sedation is the adverse effect. Nursing actions is provide ice chips or mouth swabs, provide safety measures for the client. Epidural and spinal regional regional analgesia consists of using analgesics such as fentanyl and sufentanyl, which are short-acting opioids that are administered as a motor block into the epidural or intra fecal space without anesthesia. These opioids produce regional analgesia providing rapid pain relief while still allowing the client to sense contractions and maintain the ability to bear down. Adverse adverse effects, decreased gastric emptying resulting in nausea and vomiting, inhibition of bowel and bladder elimination sensations, bradycardia or tachycardia, hypotension, allergic reaction and pruritus, and elevated temperature. Nursing actions. Institute safety precautions such as putting side rolls up on the client's bed. The client can experience dizziness and sedation, which increases maternal risk for injury. 
monitor maternal vital signs per fertility protocol, continue FHA, FHR pattern monitoring. Pharmacological anesthesia. Pharmacological anesthesia eliminates pain perceptions by interrupting the nerve impulses to the brain. Anesthesia used in childbirth includes regional blocks, nitrous oxide, and general anesthesia. Nitrous oxide is an inhaled anesthetic that can be used for labor analgesia. The client uses inhaled nitrous oxide intermittently for pain. However, it does not eliminate the uterine contraction pain, but does decrease the client's perception of the pain. An advantage of nitrous oxide is that it has a rapid onset and quickly clears the body by exhalation and does not accumulate in fetal or maternal tissues. Also, the client self-administers the nitrous while they are alert and awake. An adverse effect is dizziness and nausea. Regional blocks are most commonly used and consist of pudendal, epidural, spinal, and paracervical nerve block. Pudendal block consists of a local anesthetic, lidocaine or bipuvacaine, administered transvaginally into the space in front of the pudendal nerve. This type of block has no maternal or fetal systemic effects, but it does provide local anesthesia to the perineum, vulva, and rectal areas during birth. Episiotomy and episiotomy repair. It is administered during the late second stage of labor, 10 to 20 minutes before birth, providing analgesia prior to spontaneous expulsion of the fetus or forceps assisted or vacuum assisted birth. It is suitable during the second and third stages of labor and for repair of episiotomy and lacerations. Adverse effects is compromise of maternal bearing down reflex. Epidural block consists of a local anesthetic <clears throat> bupivacaine along with an analgesic morphine or fentanyl injected into the epidural space at the level of the fourth or fifth vertebrae. This eliminates pain from the level of the umbilicus to the thighs, relieving the discomfort of uterine contractions, fetal descent, and stretching of the perineum. However, this might not remove pressure sensations. Continuous infusion or intermittent injections can be administered through an indwelling epidural catheter. Patient-controlled epidural analgesia is a technique for labor analgesia and is favored method of pain management for labor and birth. It is suitable for all stages of labor and types of birth and for repair of episiotomy and lacerations. Adverse effects are maternal hypotension, fetal bradycardia, fever, itching, inability to fill the urge to void, urinary retention, and loss of the bearing down reflex. The nursing actions are administer a bolus of IV fluids to help offset maternal hypotension, help position and steady the client into a sitting or sideline modified lateral semi-prone recumbent position with the back curved to widen the intervertebral space for insertion of the epidural catheter. Coach the client in pushing efforts and request an evaluation of epidural pain management by anesthesia personnel if pushing efforts are ineffective. Ineffective. Assess FHR patterns continuously, assess for orthostatic hypotension, sequential compression devices may be used as a prophylactic treatment for DVT and hypotension following epidural placement, and monitor for the return of sensation and motor control of the client's legs after birth but prior to standing. Use patient-controlled analgesic if provided. Spinal anesthesia or block consists of a local anesthetic that is injected into the subarachnoid space into the spinal fluid at the third, fourth, or fifth lumbar interspace. This can be done alone or in combination with an analgesic such as fentanyl. The spinal block eliminates all sensations from the level of the nipples to the feet. It is commonly used for, used for cesarean bursts. As a low spinal block can be used for vaginal bursts, it is not used for labor. A spinal block is administered in the late second stage or before cesarean birth. Adverse effects, maternal hypotension, fetal bradycardia, loss of bearing down reflex, potential headache from leakage of CSF, high incidence of maternal bladder and uterine autonomy, nursing actions, assess maternal vita signs every 10 minutes, assess uterine contractions and level of anesthesia and FHR patterns, recognize manifestations of impending birth, including sitting on one buttock, making grunting sounds and bulging of the perineum. Client education, bear down for expulsion of the fetus because during a vaginal birth, contractions will not be felt. General anesthesia, 
rarely used for vaginal or cesarean births when there are no complications present. It is used only in the event of a birth complication or emergency where there is a contraindication to nerve block analgesia or anesthesia. General anesthesia produces unconsciousness. Nursing actions. Monitor maternal vital signs. Monitor FHR patterns. Ensure that the client has had nothing by mouth. Ensure that the IV infusion is in place. Apply anti-embolic stockings or sequential compression devices. Pre-medicate the client with oral antacid or neutralize ecstatic stomach contents. Administer a histamine receptor agonist such as famantidine to decrease gastric acid production. Administer metoclopramide to increase gastric emptying as prescribed. Place a wedge under the client's hips to displace the uterus. Maintain an open airway and cardiopulmonary function and assess the client postpartum to or for decreased uterine tone, which can lead to hemorrhage and may be produced by pharmacological agents used in general anesthesia.